Welcome to Hello Self. It's a podcast focused on turning your cans into cans and your dreams into plans. I am your host, coach, and author, Patricia Leonard. Well, hello out there, all of my Hello Self podcast listeners. I'm so glad you tuned in today, and are you in for a big surprise? Maybe even looking at how you live your life, and that's what this is all about. Hello Self is really discovering who we are and what we want out of life and some tips and strategies about how we can go about getting that. Hello Self is about also turning your cans into cans and your dreams into plans. So get those dreams and goals off that someday shelf and start today living them. I am Patricia Leonard and I am your host of Hello Self. I'm a speaker, a coach, and an entrepreneur and author. So it doesn't make me an expert in anything. It just means that I got a lot of titles. <laughs> but have I got a treat for you today? And um, I've known this woman for a number of years, but I learned something different about her every day. That's just how it is in life. If we pay attention to ourselves and to those around us, we learn a lot about who we are. So she will be talking to you about some ways to take care of yourself and say hello to yourself when you're not taking care of yourself and begin to become aware of that. So right now, I'd like to say welcome to my guest interviewer today, Cassandra Finch. I'm so glad you're here, Cassandra. Thank you, Pat. That sounds, you know, you and I go back so far. I think we've known each other for a couple of decades yes. now. So it sounds a little, you know, you and I are really close friends. So yes. I love the way that sounds. My guest. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, let me just tell our yes, audience. Yeah. Let me... Across yeah. the couch. So this is really cool. This is Good. really cool to do this. Now, let me tell our audience a little bit about you from your bio and then I'll ask you to tell your own story in your own way. And um, that that's usually the most beneficial anyway, but I'll give you I'll give them the background. Cassandra Finch is a holistic health coach. So this is just about who she is today, but you're going to hear a lot more about her journey. Who helps people find the inspiration and time to add the power of vegetables to their everyday meals. Most of us don't think about Hello Self as being part of what we eat, but you're gonna find out today that who you are and your lifestyle is about what you eat, one aspect of it. She is also, Cassandra is also an Emmy award-winning former television reporter. She is the founder, and this is what she's going to be talking about today, Plant Power You, a health-centered motivational company. So you're going to be inspired to pay more attention to how you're taking care of yourself so you can have a better quality of life. Cassandra helps her clients and community claim ownership of their lives by showing them that the future of their fate starts with what's right on their plate. Isn't that interesting? You will never look at your plate in the same way that you have in the past. Cassandra has cooked professionally in restaurant kitchens and spent countless hours sharing with the curious, the confused, and the courageous about how their health and life struggles are just the invitations they need to follow a new way of living that begins with food, the right food. <laughs> Her desire is for all health seekers to learn the secrets and daily habits that can plant power 
their lives so that they can discover who they are truly meant to be. And that's what how it connects with hello self. Because the better you uh, understand your body, the better you understand yourself and the things that you want to do in life. And so we'll find out a little bit more about Cassandra as she goes through her own story. But I want to say some things. You might still be asking, what has this got to do with Hello Self? And I say a lot. And let's just revisit that during the podcast on some highlights as Cassandra tells her story. So Cassandra, I'll turn it over to you and let you tell a little bit about your journey of how you got here. And then I'd like to come back at some point and talk about how your plan for eating right is a lot like running a business. Hmm, that is true. Um, you know, I think, Pat, when I start, I can actually kind of start because these intersect with something you said in your book, in Hello Self. And I was reading it. And when I think about my story, it sort of started with listening to the small, the nudges of what life is trying to tell you. Yes. And that's how I got started on this journey was listening to what the small, the, the nudges that life was trying to tell me. Yes. As you mentioned, several years ago, I was a television reporter and I loved it, but it was quite anything, you know, we think about in the media can be quite stressful on the body. And I didn't know at that time that I was probably tearing my body apart. You can't, you don't get a chance to really eat well. You're always on the run. You're in a car, you're going to the police, fire, all these, <laughs> all these different yes. things. Um, but it was okay. And after a while, after so many years, I said, I want to do something different. Um, well, just as it happens, as I thought I was going to open up my own business, my father and my mother became really ill and I became a caretaker. And so becoming a caretaker, my father had Parkinson's, my mother had breast cancer. Um, even though I was doing a lot, I was holding a lot of that stress hmm. and even some of that anger in. And as a side note, I would just say, if there are caretakers who are listening to this, don't put off taking care of yourself yeah. because eventually all of that will come back on you at a later date. You might be getting through this period, but it'll come back to you on a later Great date. So point. It, it will. Um, so anyway, after that, shortly, kind of during that time I was taking care of my father, I noticed I started having a lot of digestive problems. And, you know, in life, I think the thing about it is sometimes we get so caught up in say an illness or sickness, we don't ask, well, what is this trying to teach me? Mm -hmm. uh, and I truly believe sometimes illness can also, and I'm not saying this every time, but can be used to move you to a higher level of self. Absolutely. If you'll, if you'll just listen to it. Um, so anyway, I had a lot of ovarian problems. I had digestive problems and I ended up, I bet you've known me forever. I am really small. And so it turned out that after a while, I started, started losing even more weight and I couldn't help it. I was like, I got down to like 90 something pounds, you know, and people, I, I rarely went out. And sometimes people would ask me, like, I mean, I almost looked like near death at the time. Um, and I noticed I wasn't digesting anything. I couldn't, I, carbs, meat, just nothing. And I started researching and I found out so much. Um, I found out so much, especially about the foods that we were eating, about processed foods. I knew this and it's crazy because you think some things are so obvious, but they are not. I didn't understand how processed foods were causing more inflammation in my body. Mm -hmm. I didn't understand that as women, we have, many women have challenging periods and we don't know that a lot of times it's related to the foods that we yes. eat. They're causing so much inflammation. And in my own, these are my own words, sometimes I think the digestive system is choking. It's very closely aligned to all the organs and you know, the, the sexual organs and we can understand um, how that's affecting them. 
So I just went, uh, just really went in a deep dive of, of everything I ate. I could only eat for a while um, broth. I could only eat soups. I could only eat greens. And I was also bedridden for around seven months, just flat on my back, couldn't work or whatever. But as I noticed, as I started eating more plant-based foods, um, things started changing. Eventually, not only did I start getting stronger, but spiritually certain things started happening. Um, I became more sensitive, more aware. Uh, I think people understand it's like the beauty, I think, of plant-based foods is that they help kind of dull all the, I would call it all the, some of the toxic things that are happening in your life, and they open yourself up. To, to be closer to nature. They open yourself up to be clear. Mm -hmm. I say plant power foods, um, open yourself to be more confident, even more creative in what you're doing. And that's what I discovered. So anyway, I decided yeah. that this was, this is what I was going to do. I had to share this. Um, and so it, it turned my trajectory of what I wanted to do. I started I'm doing internships in restaurants. I started working professionally in different restaurants. And in fact, as you know, since you said I was a reporter, I even worked at Whole Foods for six years. I wanted to immerse myself in everything related to food. And at one point I was going to open a restaurant, but after I realized what it's like in the restaurant life, I decided no. <laughs> right. I was like, no, that's not for me at this stage of my life. But I did have several people who were coming into Whole Foods who were searching for other answers of why is this happening to me? Not understanding that life was taking them on a new direction mm -hmm. of there. And if they could only understand that and sometimes we fight it so much. And again, you talk about this in your book about the awakening, you know, that people are having. And so I just said, oh my gosh, this is part of my calling to help guide them on this new trajectory that life is, um, to kind of being their wing woman and help them because they realize that a lot of their answers, how food is bogging them down, whether it's with their weight, whether it's with chronic disease. Um, people have so many habits that have become part of their lives. They don't know how to find a way out. And that is helping them discover how plants can help power their lives in a new way. And so that's what I do as a health coach, is I work one-on-one -on -one with people helping them to do that. I love what Cassandra was saying about the journey to where you want to get sometimes does not go from A to B, just like she knew that she wanted to get her health in better shape, get her body in better shape. She needed to. And she got around food, the things that she knew could maybe change the way her system was working. And so she went in Whole Foods. Some people would say, well, isn't that a step down? Because we get so caught up in the image, the image of what, without even thinking about the benefits that we get from this. And I love that because just like in a business, when you go, when you want to do something, what you try to do is surround yourself with a supportive environment. So Whole Foods happened to be a supportive environment. And guess what else she did? And I love this, Cassandra. You put yourself where there could be some potential clients and you could make a an impact in their life. Not Maybe you weren't even thinking about clients at that point, but you were thinking about I can make an impact. So I think that's really important from a business standpoint or something that you want to do with your life is get around the people. Would you, would you say that's true, Cassandra? I think that's true. And it hits upon something you just said about releasing of your old self. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. If you can release and let go of the ego, and I'm not saying it was easy by any means, Pat, but I had to mm -hmm. release I go, in fact, one time, you know, a couple of times people came in and they saw me and they're like, weren't you that, weren't you on TV? Didn't I see you, you know, on TV? What are you doing here? 
but I knew that to get rid of the next, get uh, to the next stage of my life, I had to release mm -hmm. that part of me. And I think when we are making a change, whether it's with food, whether it's with relationships, whether it's with an identity, we hold on to it. We don't want to let go of it. And if we can learn how to release it easier, there's so much more waiting on the other side. Oh my that's gosh. What we struggle with is releasing that old identity. And again, that's why I think vegetables, that's just my tool in the way I do it. I think it helps make that process a lot easier for people. You know, it's so hard for us to surrender because we are ego focused society in general. And what we want to do constantly is comp to compare and competition versus living our own life to our own self. And that's what it is. Hello self is you paid attention. It was speaking and said, give me a voice, give me an expression because I you're going down. I need to talk. I need to share. Would you say that was true that your, yeah, your body was screaming? Yeah. I agree. So many people are blossoming into something else. I think it's very appropriate for this conversation. Mm -hmm. They are trying to blossom. And I think a lot of times people don't understand there are different stages in our lives. And, you know, you have that child stage where you're supposed to do certain things. You're even supposed you can eat certain things. But what worked for when you were 15 doesn't work for when you are 45, even 35. I think people understand that the body is constantly evolving. It is constantly, it's also transforming and wants to transform in a new way. And I think that it's almost like, um, there's a word, but I don't, <laughs> yeah, it's just getting stuck because you're giving it the same old things. And it's saying, we have this new self that's ready to blossom and you're feeding us the same old stuff that we did at 10, 15. Yes. And I understand a lot of it's because of what society and culture does, yes. but they don't understand that they're supposed to release that part of them to become this new powerful woman or man that they're supposed to become. A new yes. powerful self is ready for them. And you know, and can I say, yeah, go ahead. go ahead. No, go ahead. Yeah. You know, you and I have had some conversations and we've talked about how when people go and they eat out or they go to certain meetings and things like that, and they want to eat heavy laden foods. But if they ate lighter and if they ate foods that had more nutrients, like more phytonutrients, things like that, that had um, represented so many things and colors and recharged them and energized them, what could be accomplished? Like, that's the secret weapon. People are spending too much time trying to figure this out. And they have so they have another secret weapon that could help them. You yeah. know, I, I was in corporate training for a number of years. And I remember one of the things that they always expected was when we got together to have an event or a training, there was food ahead of time. And I remember saying, because I've always been about taking care of my body. I was a jock all my life out there <laughs> doing things, <laughs> and but taking care of my body. And I remember the first thing they wanted was, well, what are we going to have to eat? What are we going to have? I mean, it was donuts. It was uh, uh, soda. It was um, sweet things. It was all. Th and the truth is, those may be comfort foods, but they are not. They may lay, let you just lay back and be lazy, but they do not open the mind to listen because what you do is you go into this comatose or whatever it is. I don't even know. You probably know what the stage is, but they go into that and they don't hear a thing. So we lost the value of the motivation. And I hope those of you listening right now are not eating a brownie. <laughs> 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 I think they're getting ready to put it down. They are, they are. I think they're going to put it down a little bit. Because <laughs> yeah. it's so much more interesting than the brownie than they're eating. <laughs> but, but you know, uh, our bodies, you mentioned that you're uh, about your mom and dad. The world, we have these nudges and these signs and these hello self moments all around us. Even though you said, Sometimes we reject them. No, I'm not going there. I'm not doing this. Uh, I'm mad at the world because mom and dad. But 
sometimes out of a, a situation that doesn't feel really good, it could be losing a job. It could be uh, losing a parent just as Cassandra or, or illness in the family or illness. And so sometimes it's just that waking up and paying attention because so much of the time we're living in fog and we use food as a way to keep us in that fog. Exactly. Yes, yeah. we do. We do. We do. It numbs us. Yes. It comforts yeah. us. It numbs us. Um, and we have to think about, we don't want to face certain things and it's, it's easier. And one thing I think for people to do is if they can just be still, mm. if they can just be still for a little bit, because a lot of those moments will pass and, and Pat, I'm not obviously perfect in any way with this. There are moments when I, I give into it, I've gotten a lot better, but I know that if I can just be still or even do something else um, and I feel stronger and better for it when I don't necessarily totally give in to mm -hmm. the cravings, you know, and I think it's not, I don't think it's good to feel guilty about something ah, good um, that you ate. I think release the guilt, but you might want to do an assessment. How does my body feel? A lot of times people eat something so eat something that has a lot of sugar, flour. We don't pay attention to what the body is telling us. And then they'll have all this gas afterwards, or they might have a little cramp, or they might eat late at night, and they don't realize that they're not sleeping as well. Um, I had a client who was realizing that they were eating too much salt in the evening, and that may have something to do with why they're here. They didn't understand why they were getting going to the bathroom you know, so much, but all the salt eating so late and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, so pay attention to those little things and say, ah, do I really want to feel this way again? Do I really kind of want to have to have so much coffee in the morning because I feel sluggish, mm -hmm. you know? Oh, I'm um, guilty. I'm guilty. I have what, one what? cup. I have one cup though, but I'm guilty. I I run to the coffee pot and say, "Ooh, I need my coffee." <laughs> but I only have one cup. Okay. Okay. Good. You just want your little your little starter. You just want your little starter. Yes. But I don't feel that from what I, you're telling me, it's not because you overdosed on something oh, no. the the night before and you felt so heavy and you had to make up for it by drinking the coffee the next day. Yeah. You know, something, yeah. you know, I brought that thing up about brownie a while ago, about a brownie. Are you eating it? Well, I have to say something. I have these conversations with myself. I, and, and I do. I talk to myself. I hope nobody's listening, <laughs> but I talk to myself. So I do. My dad, when I was a little girl, we always had our dinner and then dad would like a piece of cake or something sweet. And my dad was real thin and, uh, but he, he knew how to manage his food. I don't think he was conscious of it because that was years ago. But one thing that I do, a habit that I got from my father is I always like something sweet <laughs> at the end of my meal. So I say, Patricia, this is your treat for being good today. You went to the gym. So I have a conversation with myself. And let me tell you, this is what I do. And I know people think I'm really crazy, but I'll eat uh, one tablespoon, a big, uh, like a scoop, uh, not a big one, but a tablespoon of um, coconut milk, coconut uh, ice cream. Or I'll have a, not even a one inch, a half inch square of a breast. <laughs> and, okay. And that satisfies me. And she says, okay, thank you, Patricia. I really enjoyed that. <laughs> and you know what else I hear you saying, Pat, when you do that? Yeah. Because um, some of it is also based on the fact that um, you loved your father, you know, just some things that are familiar. But from what you are telling me, you do have a certain mindfulness 
oh, about yeah. doing it. And the other thing is, and, and I've experienced this, and this is different, when we're eating to fulfill an emotional, like that feeling sometimes when the day is just not going right. Yes. And you get some cookies and you, you get the cookies and you can't stop eating them. You know, um, there's the fact is mindfulness counts a lot. The reason and enjoyment and sheer pleasure. But like you said, to be able that you do it and that you can you can stop because not all, like I can't like you can do that. That's good. I can't necessarily keep saying certain things in the house and I don't keep certain things else because it's very challenging for me to stop. Mm -hmm. So I don't keep them in the house, certain things, you know? Yes, I do understand what you're saying because I have, I, the, the whole thing is I am very aware of myself. Um, and yet I, things sneak by me that I later on say, now, what was that all about? What is that all about? So uh, I don't even think of it as it's just something that, um, okay, I can be driving down the road and somebody cuts me off and I have vowed I'm not going to let those things upset me anymore. I know this is not about food, but it does go to food sometimes because when mm -hmm. people get yeah. upset, they jump on food as a way to satisfy them. But I, and here's what I do. I say to myself, I thought you said you weren't going to do that anymore. Or if I eat too much, I thought you said you were going to cut back on your evening meal and not eat and just have these things. I thought you said. So I constantly have this conversation with self. And I know it sounds crazy, but conversation with self, because I think you're right. We can get caught up in the habit, like my father or... uh you said something a while ago about going to bed, eating later and going to bed. I was just reading an article yesterday morning um, as I was having my one cup of coffee. <laughs> but I was reading an article about, uh, what was I talking about? <laughs> You're reading an article. We were reading an article. Oh, you said something about going to bed. So, yes, I, yes, uh, yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I was reading this article and it was talking about what sleep is really about is rejuvenating the body, giving mm -hmm. it the time to uh, get back to working properly and take care of the little things that maybe uh, bothered you during the day. So it's really supposed to be about rejuvenating. And what we do is we eat late and guess what? It digests all night and wears the body down. And I liked what you said about that. And I want to, you know, also say, uh, you know, sleep, everything, like you said, recharge, rejuvenating. It helps us cleanse our emotions. We go to bed. I, I think it's really good. I always try if I've had a rough day, if I can, to try to, to cleanse myself or take a shower or something to transition into yes. that which is good anyway but it's such a beautiful time to turn over a new leaf so much happens to help us transform through the night and you know going back and talking about watching violent shows or things like that people might watch dramas and things like that i believe this is you know all that is absorbed and it even makes it even more challenging sometimes to even go to sleep all this stuff is being processed so not along not just with food emotions conversations yes. all of those things are being processed at night and we get to turn over a new leaf I'm, I'm not one necessarily who believes someone has to have like eight hours of sleep everybody's different I'm more of a, a six hour but I do believe that there's a way to set the stage um, for sleep. And I think that's very, very important what you do to set the stage so you can get the optimal. Benefit. Yes. Yes. Very good point. Uh, you know, I mentioned earlier, and I, as I'm listening to you, I mentioned earlier to our audience that managing our body is in alignment with managing a business. I mean, if you think about it, mm -hmm. if you want to have a successful business, You've got to manage the facilities, the 
And so with our, uh, you know, and the clients and the uh, strategies you use and all of them, the budget. And mm -hmm. I was thinking, yeah, and I'm thinking about this as Cassandra was talking, you, what you end up doing is if you're taking care of yourself from a nutrition and food standpoint and paying attention to these things, I even wrote this down. It's like your, I call it facilities management. <laughs> it's like managing your facilities, your mind, your heart, your emotions, your physical body, uh, the way you think. I mean, you see how all this begins to work. So it's not any different. We always act like, oh, she's into food. This is not any, it's not connected to this. Everything is connected to who you are and how you live your life. What, you that is true because yeah. people can sense that glow that they have about you. They can tell what's on the inside comes out on the on the outside. And a person might be saying, I'm filling up everything with the schedule. I'm making my deadlines. But a lot of times they're just many people I've met. Um, are on a treadmill they're just and it's they can't keep up with it yes. you know in fact they they're trying to keep the treadmills going on uh without them and so they know that there's something they're trying to stay a step ahead of it mm -hmm. so not only do you feel um not in control people can also see that within you that you're not in control your energy is low so you're dependent upon eating things that are a lot more sh sugary oh, great you know, things like that eating more flour you know processed foods um and sometimes you feel it's all going to fall apart but the thing about it is it's like wouldn't you want to show up as your wouldn't don't you want to show up more as you know a, a nine or ten in your life and that number fluctuates depending yes. on what day it is believe yes. me i understand that but don't you want to come out fully vibrant fully energized and for your your contacts your clients all those people to see that within you yes. they know because how you are affects them all the people that you come in contact with and their businesses, you are part of an energy center. And we don't think ourselves as an energy or power center. So not only are we powering up, we're helping to make them stronger, our relationships stronger oh and empower God. them. So we have to really think about how we show up and what we do. And we have to say, if it takes saying, ourselves, okay, stop, whatever I have to do to get myself together, this isn't working because I want to work at a higher level with more enthusiasm, as I said, with more clarity, with more creativity and more confidence. What are the things that I need to do to create? You know that? what, what you're telling, oh my gosh, this is right on target. I remember, I, I get, people that are calling me and oh my god my life is falling apart and i don't know what to do and uh, i just got canceled out on this blah 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 and so they call me and i was talking to i was telling a friend yesterday about somebody who had just called me and they were frantic and in uh oh it's you know the world is falling apart and blah 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 but it was about their own life and I said to my friend, why does everybody call me? Because I don't have everything together. She said, because you stop, you cause them to stop and get in touch with themselves. And Cassandra, that is exactly what your food and uh, the way we think about food and the food we eat and all of that is exactly what she was telling me is it is stopping. You said mindfulness. It's stopping. Mm -hmm. But I just I say, wait a minute. It isn't falling apart. What's going on? So I get them to slow down. And in five minutes, they've taken care of their own problem. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I think that's what your food does, too. It makes them. I know she hadn't been eating right. I can tell you that for a fact, but um, I I think a lot of times it keeps uh, the way we eat and the way we live our lifestyle, like you were mentioning, rush, 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 stress. I think it causes us to 
the last thing that we pay attention to is us. Is us. And you know, the thing about it, as you said, because food is just a tool. I think it's a conduit to help us go deeper oh, within, within ourselves. I, I do. And there's so many different ways. Some people focus more on, and it's not necessarily the diet or just the food, but there's so many things about how to tap into our emotions. Our emotions are key to this. Mm -hmm. And a person will start, I say with food, it'll help them understand at a deeper level what's going, they'll start noticing changes in their body. Yes. Yes. But I think especially with plant power, you it's one way to power yourself, but getting in touch with yourself, taking your time, changing certain lifestyle habits. It's all of the above. It's not necessarily one thing. I think yeah. food for me makes it easier, but it's all of those things that help you to go to go deeper and that's that's how that's what I realized was part of um my superpower was helping people go deeper within themselves to help discover how can I can create change for what myself. are some of the things Cassandra that your clients have told you that they've recognized since they've started working with you that they've become aware oh of what my gosh or um for some of my clients, they come to me. It's possibly been about relationships. Yes. They wanted to deal with relationships and struggles and communication. Um, but they're also suffering from various illnesses too. And so we're, we, we have two things we're doing. We're connecting with changing what they ingest in the body because as they change what they ingest in the body, it makes them calmer. It lowers inflammation. People don't understand what lowering inflammation body does, just but in their bodies does on a universal level. Um, but they realize that the conversations they're having with people is changing. They're becoming more sensitive centered, more focused. And they're realizing, they said, these changes aren't as hard as I thought they would be. Oh. That's what some of them have told me. So they're seeing an overhaul in their life. We start with, for example, where are they now? Where do they want to be? And then we continually evaluate. And, the, and then they said, I never thought that I'd be here at this level. And now I've, I've come to this within this amount of time. Some of them, uh, especially I work with looking at little tiny steps. I'm a big person. I'm big on, I'm not a big person. I'm a little person, but I'm big yeah. on making, um, doing small steps that are comfortable for you. The way, not every way works. Everybody has their own way of getting there. So we look at, you know, we look at, okay, what are the tiny steps and the changes that you need to make in your life that fits you? So I don't do a one size fits all. Ah, and so they're saying, I never saw, I think what I love hearing is when a person says, I never thought I would become the person that I am, or I never thought that I would make these type of changes. I never thought that I would be able to be consistent in my eating habits. Mm. Or when a person says, my doctor said they're seeing changes in my blood work. Yes. And that is happening. Um, those are some of the things that I hear. I clients. like, yeah, I like what you're saying that they're getting confirmations, not just from themselves, but from others like doctors and from uh, people that they're working with. You're different now, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And the other thing is, um, when they start having breakthroughs in their life, because this work takes you deeper into things that are holding you back as a holistic, I'm a holistic health coach. So I work in all areas. When you have a breakthrough. Yeah, yeah Pat, what were you getting ready to say? No, no, no. I was just going to say, because you even said this is about relationships. This is about, yeah. I'm trying to deal with relationships and food can make a difference. And yeah. And children, exactly. Family, yeah, exactly. People sometimes are just thinking this is just about the weight, and, and they, and we get a chance to say, okay, how is this weighing down or burning so many other aspects of your life that you yes. can free yourself? Yes. 
Oh, my God. See, that's the thing that if we think that hello self or food or one thing, we are not a one thing society. We're a human beings that has emotions and all these things work if we pay attention and get started on what makes sense for us. Just like you were saying, the food was your avenue. Exactly. Exactly. It, it was. And the thing I think people dismiss and go, going back to the food is, um, you know, you and I have talked about the energetic properties of food. For example, when we think about greens, but there, there's a reason, even looking at the shape of greens, when you look at, say, like, collard greens or you think of something that kind of has has kind of that funnel type of look that that opens up you know a lot of that with greens because when you take them out and there's a looseness that's where we understand some of our creativity can come sometimes our openness can come from um when we think of color there's you know we have energetic uh uh, areas in our body and we can even use the color to mm -hmm. bring that out you know in our body the oranges you know the squashes the butternut squashes orange things love like it, that love it. <laughs> um, the orange bell peppers things like that think about if you have this aliveness if those plants have aliveness and color you just have to tap into that bounty of color and what it will do to kind of reignite all those things within your body. Cassandra, what do you say to some people? And and I want to wrap this up in a few minutes, but what do you say to some people that say, I really don't have the money to eat healthy? Um, you know, I'll, I'll just run by McDonald's and get some French fries or I'll just, what do you say if somebody says, I, I love to do this, but I just don't have the income to afford these kind of foods. What do you say? You know, I, I would question whether it's the income or the energy sometimes to do that. Sometimes we look at, you know, what's familiar and, and the thing about it is, is, <laughs> is that you're getting, you could get, for example, I want to say, say if you've made certain things like beans or a stew you know you got to think like you could get something that's like for 229 that's you know for for dried beans or for rice and that stretches where you think about you get that one meal for whatever whatever mcdonald's <laughs> price yes. Yes. That one meal. and it doesn't stretch across for you know for three or four meals if you get a head of cauliflower you get a head of broccoli and you cut it up and, and and I'm being very simple. I'm more of a simple cook and things like Same that. Same thing here. So yeah, um, uh, if you get very simple things, you'd be surprised at how much those things last. You know, we're in winter. So you think about your squashes. Those are like, those things are huge and you cut them up and you roast them. So I would say that a lot of the items that we have, actually, if you're eating simply, actually are cheaper than what it would cost if you ate out they actually are you actually save money you save money by eating in than by going out i but agree the, uh. but the other aspect is the issue for a lot of people um and and i will say this i want to go back to what you said uh not far from me um i went into a store that was in an area that didn't have really great grocery stores, but there were still, even in their produce section, they still had lemons, limes, they had kale, they had certain things that I know if you, if you cook them up, that you could still stretch them for your family, mm -hmm. you know, but we're dealing with issues of habits sometimes rather than cost. Yes. And that's I where the issue is of lifetime habits. And, you know, um, I, I I go to a lot of events, and like we've said, there's food there all the time. And so people make fun of me because how come you don't? I eat at home all the time. I cook my own food because I'm aware, and I know I am different. But it's another thing when you go out with people, sometimes they make you feel uncomfortable and you have to have a mindset to say, I'm taking care 
of myself. Pat, I need you to say, what is it that you do? You said you bring your own food, but tell everybody what you bring. Tell them it's because what you do is so easy and simple that a lot of people don't think about it. What is it that you do? Oh my God. Well, if I make a meal, when I make a meal, I'll usually, you you brought up uh, cauliflower and some of those. I can make two or three meals, not the whole meal, but side dishes out of one head of cauliflower. So I, it's, and when I go to um, events, I this is weird, but I always eat before I go. I eat something so I'm not tempted to pick up all the snack foods that have all the um, things that I don't want to eat. And so I take care of myself, I think, ahead of time. And I buy a lot of vegetables. I'm not always buying all organic because I am on a limited budget. So I don't always buy all organic. And I'm not even sure <laughs> if what we get sold is really organic or not. So, but I, um, yes, but I do. I have meals that extend themselves. I make a lot of soup, just like you said. Um, when I go someplace, if I'll take an apple with me, and uh, if I get hungry, I'll have that instead of lunch. Somebody said, I, I'm on the board of women in film and television and said, well, did you bring anything to eat today? Yes. And I had this little container with apples cut up <laughs> with cinnamon <laughs> sprinkled on them. But I'm not, it doesn't bother me anymore. I, I am, I guess I'm so sassy in a way that number one, well, number one is God. Number two is Patricia. It's just the way it is in life for me. So yes, I do. And I'm very aware. And I watch others um, who struggle and I watch what they eat. And I'm thinking, Cassandra, you are on to something. If any of you are even thinking that this is a faddish thing or this is crazy, please get out there and just try it. Get a hold of Cassandra. Just try this different shift it's just a mind shift is really mm -hmm. what it is and it's an it, elevation and it, an elevation yes yes because we get stuck in um what has been what has been and you've left that behind yeah did you have something to say about that what has no been? i agree what has been what what may have worked before is doesn't work anymore and it's exactly. okay it's okay to say we can release that one way of life when a new way of life is beckoning for so to us for so much and so you know much. another thing cassandra is i look at a lot of the parents with these children that get out of hand and stuff you know it's not that they're bad kids uh they have they are a just going along with the diets that the parents have a lot of times and they need healthy foods to eat and they've gotten so used to the sugar and the uh, whatever else is in there that's not good you know all that but i think that we have got to change our society because i think the thinking in the way we eat and you know this pandemic i i i am not blessing this pandemic but it made a lot of people stop and think because they don't have the money to buy all of that stuff and to eat out every other day. And uh, so it made them stop and think, how can I have better meals for my children and for my family? I, I think it. there are some things that have come out of that that um, I think can benefit us as a society. Yeah, I wanted to... Um, do you run workshops, Cassandra, that people can, do you run online virtual workshops or do you, how do you get to yeah. your point? Yeah, it's something I plan to do more. I have in the past, but it's something I plan to do more of um, in 2023. Right yes. now, I'm focusing more. I love one-on-one -on -one coaching. I love taking people one-on-one -on, -one on a journey. I think they're so much. Um, mm -hmm. 
So even if I work with people on a, in a workshop, I really encourage them to work with me one-on-one -on -one because yeah. it's transformative because I give them the time and the container and the support to really change. Yes. And so they can said, focus you know, on them. Deeper, yeah. Yes. So yeah. they can really focus on themselves and what exactly. makes sense for them. Yeah. Exactly. So uh, exactly. how would someone, how do they get to you? I mean, do you have a website or how do they get to you to sign up? Oh, yes. Uh, my website is plantpoweru, that's the letter U, dot com. Um, but they can reach out to me uh, at my email, which is Cassandra, C-A-S-S-A-N-D-R-A, -S 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 at plantpoweru.com. Just send me an email and yeah. let's, let's, let's talk. And, you know, if you're not ready to sign up, just this call or, or, or send her an email and then get a, a brief to ask your questions and see how she can help you start moving in the direction that's going to be best for you. Um, are there, let's see, I'm trying to think if there's anything, is there anything else we need to cover? Now, all of this information about Cassandra will be posted because we're on um, Nashville Business Radio X out of Atlanta. And then I'll have um, these excerpts, these episodes on my YouTube and they'll be posted on LinkedIn and uh, social media sites. So you can get to know Cassandra through that. And then she's got a website. Yeah. And, yeah. 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 Pl plant power you. So um, I think that, and you know what, you may say this is not for you, but are you committed to yourself? Hello self is not just um, about getting more education or about it's about looking at yourself and giving yourself a chance to let you know what you need and what makes sense for your body. So um, is there anything else that we need to say to our listeners, Cassandra, before we sign off? Any I just advice? want to say, I think this goes back to what you were saying in Hello Self, because actually one of the fundamental things that I would want people to ask themselves is what is my life trying to teach me? Mm. I think it's really important. What is, what is life, my life trying to teach me? Mm -hmm. at this moment when you ask yourselves that when you know what is I what am I supposed to be learning from this aspect of my life and then the next step I think is is how can I use plants or just nature to help me with mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. to help me take that next step that life wants me to take to stop holding on stop holding on to the sickness stop holding on to all the pills that they're taking stop it's okay it's okay it's okay you can you know i'm here to help you do this in a way that's not as painful but it's okay to take that next step mm -hmm. and i think that that's the commitment that you've been talking about the whole time is be aware of your be mindful of your your presence wherever you are at work wherever at home and say, why am I feeling this way? Why? Because I think it's just asking yourself a question. And then when you get that answer or you don't, give Cassandra a call and check in to say, this is what I'm feeling right now. How can you help me? So I think, um, what? If, I, okay, I do have one more question. <laughs> We're in a major societal transition. How is this impacting people's thinking about themselves, the hollow self? Are we, is this a, a major transition time in our society around food? Around? Yeah, I think it goes back to something you said a couple of minutes ago about the pandemic really made us think about our lives and what we wanted. But I do think, and maybe I was a little hope, more hopeful during the pandemic that people, once we kind of started easing out of it, they would be able to take some of these desires and goals and they would be ready to start implementing. Excuse, they were kind of seemed like we, I don't want to say re reverting back, but we, no. Yeah, we are. We, it's like people forgot all the things they wanted. They, they were like, if, 
if this ever happens and we make it out of this, this is what I'm going to do for myself. Yes. I promise I'm going to change. There was a moment. There was a moment. And then life got back to normal. So I just urge people as society continues to change, if you had those thoughts that, okay, there are things I wanted to do. There are places I wanted to move to. I see myself living a whole new life. I know I want to feel better in my body. Think about that little kernel of desire you had and say, how can I get back to this? And I put it by the wayside and now I'm going to make that happen. Oh my yeah. gosh, such great advice. In my book, I talk about the straddlers and that is exactly what uh, Cassandra is talking about the straddlers are those of you who have one foot in the comfort side, the old, and then the other foot tiptoeing into something new. So I would say at some point, Cassandra can help you step over into this new side and let go of the fear of um, what you're leaving behind because what you're going for is going to be better. So the straddlers are those that don't do anything, but they just sit there and it's time to step out. And I think that's what 2023 is about is helping people. Well, with people like you coming out and helping others see the broader concept of what Hello Self is about, food, stress, all these kind of things. So, oh, I am so excited, Cassandra. Thank you so much for being here. I believe so much in what you're doing and how it can positively impact uh, my listeners' lives. And I just hope, to my listeners now, I just hope that there is a nugget of something that came out of today that nudges you or causes you to think, you know what, I'm going to do this because today is the day to get those wishes and goals and dreams off that someday shelf and turn those cans into cans and those dreams into plans. Again, thank you for being here. And I'm Patricia Leonard, your host of Hello Self Podcast. And you can connect to these on my website, www.patricialenner.net. And I always like to leave you with this one thing. Keep living and keep dreaming. Thank you for joining Hello Self today. And may it offer insight and inspire you to stay on your runway to success. Like, share, and subscribe. And remember this, keep dreaming.